Hi again from Pookie and Buddy. Um, today's video is answering a question that one of my YouTube subscribers sent me, which was, what are the five things I most hate about anorexia? Um, I thought long and hard about whether to make this video, and I'll be honest, I've tried to make it more than once, and it's something I found really difficult. Um, there are a few things to bear in mind here. One is that um, anorexia is the kind of illness that people most notice about me when I'm unwell, but it's really kind of a symptom of a bigger thing. So I suffer with um, PTSD or what would have formerly been known as complex PTSD. Um, I'm not really in a place where I want to talk about the ins and outs of what caused that at the moment. But yeah, so anorexia is kind of a symptom as is self-harm and the suicidal ideation and stuff. Um, but it is, you know, it's a fairly major thing and it's the thing that's been the, the kind of biggest threat to my life. Um, so that's important. Um, and the other thing is that um, whilst I found myself talking about the things I hated about anorexia, I found it quite hard to talk in depth about the massive impact that it has on my family and on me as a mum and my relationship with my children um, because I'm really in a place where I'm trying to look forward at the moment and uh, my girls are absolutely amazing they're brilliantly resilient and actually I think my interpretation um, of things and theirs would be very different although it's been a, a really hard time for, for kind of all of us but so with those kind of caveats I guess I'm going to try again to make the video about the five things that I most hate about anorexia um, and and one further caveat is that this is just one story. So I can tell my story, I can't tell everyone else's. Um, so don't assume that these would be the same things for anyone else, but hopefully they'll give you a bit of an insight into what's a really quite cruel and horrible illness. Um, so the first thing is that anorexia made me into a habitual liar. So I am someone who is honest to a fault. Whatever is in my head comes out of my mouth. I'm known for it. Pookie, no filter, nightsmith is what my husband tends to call me. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really honest, except when I'm suffering with anorexia, that really takes a grip of me. I think of anorexia as this kind of like external extra being kind of an extra person in my relationship with self um, and it's kind of like a bully sitting on my shoulder um, and yeah so I guess the anorexia makes me lie and that's because anorexia when it kind of takes a grip when you become quite malnourished and your brain isn't functioning well then you get to this point where all you want to do is to desperately hold on to this illness and I can't explain the whys and wherefores but you do it's really addictive um, and so you lie I became a habitual liar about whether I'd eaten whether I'd exercised how much I'd eaten and when and with whom um, yeah just in order to work my way around people um, and I, I feel awful about that I don't lie now I'm now in a place where I'm incredibly honest about all things to do with everything really but especially including things like my weight and how much I've eaten and exercised and that sort of thing. Um, the next one is that uh, it made me unable to be the person that I want to be in terms of a work colleague, in terms of a parent, in terms of a wife, in terms of a friend. I couldn't live up to any of the standards that I set for myself and perhaps my standards were too high but the point at which when you are unable really to do anything except kind of lie in a hospital bed all day and everything revolves around food and trying to regain the weight that you've lost um, it's very hard to be a good friend you don't have the energy to, to do work um, you can't be a good parent there's no running around in the park and mucking about on the swings or even just having a laugh with your kids you know it's really really hard and, and as for being a good wife I just really was just a worry for my husband um, he's been absolutely amazing um, but yeah I, I wasn't able to be a, a good wife to him I hope that I'll make up for it now <laughs> Um, yeah, and, and it stopped me doing, yeah, all, all the things that I enjoy and just anything, period. So at its worst, anorexia did have me hospitalised and bed bound. So I was able to do really, really very little. So, yeah, I hated that. I hate that um, even though uh, there have been lots and lots of times when I've been able to be kind of high functioning with anorexia. Um, there have been, even in those times, I've not been able to do things in the way I would have wanted because there's always been those nagging kind of thoughts of self-hatred and loathing and uh, fear of food and that kind of thing. But yeah at its worst anorexia has literally stolen months of my life that I will never ever get back again um, 
it also really isolated me. So even though, so again, going back to the time when I was in hospital, um, the staff always used to joke that I was the most popular patient they ever had because I was really fortunate. Loads of you came to see me, which was wonderful. Um, but even despite that, despite the kind of, yeah, lots of people in my life, either actually or virtually, um, I felt very isolated because you kind of become in this complete bubble where nobody makes sense to you and you don't make sense to anyone else. When you're at the point where you're losing weight rapidly and you're still refusing to eat and you can't bear the thought of eating and it terrifies you um, then it's really hard for people around you to understand you um, and it's like you're in a different you know talking a different language I felt at times like I'd been transplanted into like a completely different country and culture and that none of the normal stuff around me made sense um, yeah and and so that was that was really difficult and really isolated so even when there were people around me I felt really alone in my illness um, and I, I really really hated that feeling um, and beginning to kind of reconnect with people now and uh, be able to be a better friend a better mother a better partner a better colleague um, is, is something that's that's nice as I kind of work through that sort of recovery process from anorexia although the other kind of impacts from PTSD do still sort of somewhat limit that uh, I have many days where I find it hard to, to go out because anxiety is um, yeah is stopping me but yeah so the isolation was one I hated um, next one I guess the physical consequences um, so a previous cut of this video I made and I showed it to one of my best friends and he just said I think you really underplayed the physical consequences because what I mentioned was like my hair so people comment about my haircut now um, and they say they like it and I like it I love short hair it's really fun I would have preferred if I hadn't had to cut it off because it had all fallen out um, so that was kind of one another was that I had to have a tooth taken out and then I kind of yeah mentioned briefly about not being able to walk but yeah the physical consequences I guess were far more long lasting and far reaching than that and um, it there were points at which I didn't know whether anorexia would actually kind of take my life. Um, I was completely hooked up to Agilian machines at one point. Um, and um, yeah, it, yeah, I wasn't very aware of what was going on at that point, I'll be completely honest, and I was so consumed by anorexia. But yeah, it, it really took a massive physical toll on my body. And particularly, so I've kind of had a series of, of mini relapses with anorexia in the last few years. Um, and this most recent one was the one where my body just kind of went, nah, I can't hack it anymore. Uh, and kind of went into shutdown. And I wasn't at my lowest weight, but it was the most physical toll that it's ever taken. I think just my body got really unable to manage after repeated, repeated, repeated relapses um, with never actually reaching a healthy weight in between. Um, yeah, and lots of other people do suffer a lot more um, a lot more physically um, from their illness than I have. I've actually been remarkably lucky and as I am now a healthy weight, have been for six months, which is something I'm really proud of, um, then I'm finding that the um, a lot of the, the, the physical symptoms are kind of you know going away. And lots of them I didn't even realise were symptoms of anorexia just because I've been chronically underweight for such a long period of time, even during kind of supposed periods of wellness. Um, so things like this winter, as we're going into winter, um, I'm learning that it's not normal necessarily to have have completely numb fingers and toes all the time. I just thought that was a winter thing. Um, I really realise now that's an anorexia and circulation thing. Um, and actually this winter, I can feel my toes, I can feel my fingers, um, and they're not white all the time. So um, yeah, the, the physical complications are, are wide and very different for different people. But yeah, for me, that's one of the things I hated. Um, and then finally, uh, and this sounds like a very strange thing to say, but anorexia felt like a game I could never win and it did feel like a game always I wrote a poem about it once I maybe put a link to it somewhere um, that was about how when you play the game of anorexia then you kind of make a decision uh, each day um, to, to kind of you know how you're going to play your pieces and it is a horrible game of manipulation as I said before about the lying and stuff you're manipulating the people around you um, you're in this kind of constant cycle of trying to, to, to lose more weight trying not to eat and all, and all these things and yeah and it, and it feels like this this massive game that you're playing with self but when I say it felt like a game I couldn't win that's because I had this very very strong sense of the only way that I could win at anorexia was if it killed me um, and that anything less than that meant that I hadn't done this as well as I possibly could and the kind of perfectionist mindset that comes along with anorexia uh, meant that that really kind of was with me every day um, the fact that I was failing at this illness and and it's uh, 
it's hard actually looking back now and thinking how absorbed I was in in playing that game and what a dangerous game it was playing and actually how kind of close I came to winning if you like um and I guess how glad I am that I didn't um yeah it's just really difficult to talk about even just to myself in a camera um not sure whether I'll ever put this live and if I do please be kind um I think it's important that we do talk about these things um, and I think for me at the point where I'm at in recovery now where I have uh, reached a healthy weight for the first time in my adult life um, and I've maintained that healthy weight for six months over six months now um, and these are things I'm really proud of um, as I say it's all part of this richer tapestry and I've still got a lot of work to do um, in terms of the PTSD and I'm still very much trying to learn to be the person that I want to be in terms of a wife and a mother and a friend and a colleague um, because I've never had a chance at trying to do those things without um, my various mental health issues so there's still a long road to go but yeah basically in short anorexia yes I'm now at a point where I can look back at that time and I can say I hated it I can look forward to the future and hope beyond hope that it's not a coping mechanism that I turn to again um, it's a really unhealthy coping mechanism that I've turned to again and again and again. Um, and in its most recent incarnation, it made me realise that it might be the coping mechanism that kills me. So I hope not to go there again. And so maybe I will share this video as a reminder to self, if ever I find myself slipping again, that healthy weight pookie, even though you're struggling with lots of other stuff right now, anorexia is not a good coping mechanism ultimately you hate it you hate it you hate it okay i'm gonna stop there i feel this has been really rambling and uh mm, yeah quite close to the bone um if you are in a similar situation if you're struggling with an eating disorder or another mental health issue and you want to share your thoughts your feelings your experiences the things that you hate about it and your motivations for recovery then please uh, leave a comment below um and I'd love to know your yeah your kind of thoughts on this really if there's anything that you sort of take away from it um, and as I say this has been really incredibly hard to create this video so please be kind um, I'll be back to normal in my future videos I mean I'm always happy to answer questions about my own mental health so please don't hesitate to ask but on the whole most of my videos will be about um, more practical professional stuff um, so do subscribe no subscribe that way <laughs> and um, then you'll get notified of the next videos I make which will be much more practical you know what to say when you go to see the GP how to support anxiety how to su support someone who's having a panic attack all that kind of thing so yeah please subscribe if you'd like more of that thanks so much for watching and thanks for the support which i'm sure i will get in response to posting such a personal video